Greetings, my fellow free love, sovereign thinkers. This is LL3 News Podcast. My name is Craig Trans, meaning from beautiful Swampy Maggie, South Florida. And today's date, Tuesday, August 28th, 2018. So let us begin. Yep. Just um, had to do a little homework on a few things to address uh, what happened at the Chicago Pizza area in Jacksonville for that Madden tournament. Had to do some questioning and ob- observations, even the stuff I post on, made a comment about on Facebook. Some people may not like it that suspect, shooting suspect David Katz is possibly a mind control victim or Manchurian candidate. I noticed I'm not the only one that stated that. However, I was going to look through, talk about this horrific event and many others may call it a false flag there's a shooting drill that happened north of there and like I said before a false flag attack doesn't mean no one died unless there's enough evidence pertaining to that and I'll address that and I do address that in good faith so, of course, you got to have many folks out there talking about tougher gun laws and gun violence, but sometimes it can be pretty irrelevant. It's just more of the Edward Bernays' propaganda playbook using buzzwords to get people react, hypnotized, knee-jerk reaction. So I'm going to be talking about a few things that how these other groups don't want to address. And that's, if that's the case... They do. Anyone take the initiative on sending me this information will be greatly appreciated. So, we'll begin here on what came out yesterday evening, TribLive.com. From the Associated Press, believe it or not, Jacksonville shooting suspect David Catt had a history of mental illness. Interesting, right? Hmm. Let's just read what they have to say. Baltimore suspect in a deadly shooting at Florida video game tournament had previously been hospitalized for mental illness, according to court records in his home state of Maryland, reviewed by Associated Press. Divorce filings from parents of 24-year-old David Cash of Baltimore says that as an adolescent, he was twice hospitalized in psychiatric facilities and that he was prescribed any psychotic and any depressant medications. The record shows Kat's parents disagreed on how to care for their troubled son, with his father claiming his estranged wife was exaggerating symptoms of mental illness as part of a long and bitter custody battle. The couple divorced in 2017. Kat's open fired Sunday at gaming bar inside a collection of restaurants and shops in Jacksonville, he killed two people and wounded nine others before fairly shooting himself. During the Madden NFL 19 tournament, authorities said. Of course, there's a report on here by PBS talking about that, which is uh, Sheriff, M- Sheriff Mike Williams. Sheriff Mike, Jacksonville Sheriff Mike Williams had declined to comment on the Gunman's motive. The suspect's father, Richard Katz of Baltimore, and his mother, Elizabeth Katz of Columbia, Maryland, did not respond to phone messages Sunday or Monday. Efforts by the AP to reach them at their homes were also unsuccessful. Howard County, Maryland divorce filing said David Katz played video games obsessively as a young adolescent, often refusing to go to school or to bathe. Elizabeth Katz, a, talk, a toxicologist who worked at the Department of Agriculture, said she confiscated some of her son's gaming equipment after finding him playing in the wee hours. His hair would often go unwashed for days. When I took his gaming equipment controllers away, he couldn't play at 3 or 4 in the morning. I'd get up and find that he's just walking around in the house in circles, according to the transcript in the court files. And there's a, even the time if you from WJLA, Channel 7, ABC News, 23-second video talks about his obsession. You can tell from his eyes, 
You see his eyes. He's like in a trance. But um, this is really, you know, something that people got to really focus on. And, um, and it says here, he, here to make no, he, he's, he's not here to make friends. At one point, he puts his gaming controls in her, be, in, his, in her bedroom behind a locked door, and he punched a hole in the door, she said. Hmm. A little bit cat said her youngest son had increasingly difficulty concentrating as a result of his parents' split. A judge awarded custody of the boy to his mother with visitation rights to the father. At times, David curled up into a ball, refused to attend school, and sobbed. She said she asserted that her ex-husband instructed David not to take resveratrol and any psychotic medication prescribed to him. The father claimed in court filings that David was diagnosed was not diagnosed as psychotic. He missed large stretches of school while under his mother's supervision. He was admitted to a nearby Shepherd Pratt mental health system for about 12 days in late 2007. Court documents say a psychiatrist at the time administered antidepressants. He later spent 13, about 13 days at Potomac Ridge, a mental service facility in Rockville. Of course, the news, uh, news for Jacks made this touch statement as well on his, um, on their site about his, about his illness. Richard Cassidy, NASA engineer, said his ex-wife had an obsession with using mental health professionals and, in particular, psychiatric drugs to perform the work that parents should naturally do. He said she routinely gave false information to mental health care providers. He described one incident in which the son was handcuffed by police after locking himself in his mother's car in an attempt to avoid going to a mental health appointment with her. Federal law requires gun buyers to disclose whether these have been involuntarily committed to a mental institution. Maryland state law also prohibits the sale or transfer of a gun to someone who has been diagnosed with a mental health disorder or has a history of violent behavior. And I do have that on my footnotes, and I will explain this in the specific law or statute. In recent weeks, uh, Katz legally purchased two handguns he carried from a gun store in Baltimore, the sheriff said. One of the weapons was re- was equipped with a laser sight that paints that intended that intended target with a glowing red dot. The sheriff said Katz may not have fired both weapons. He did not say whether Katz disclosed his hospitalizations on the form on the required federal background check. By the time Katz was, was 15, the divorce record show that the father asserted that Elizabeth Katz routinely called the police for trivial matters. In the transcript of a 2010 phone call, the mother phoned a 911 dispatcher accusing David of abusing her by coming late, home late after a visitation with his father. Then she then insisted that he was assaulting her by trying to gain control of a cable cord to the television. She complained to the dispatcher that he was rolling his eyes and laughing. You roll your eye. You roll your eyes. Fine. You pay. Where you are going to be tomorrow, she said in the transcript, addressing her son. The dispatcher encouraged her not to say anything further until a police officer arrived. He was eventually sent to a wilderness therapy program in Utah called Red Cliff Ascent for nearly a hundred days. So it took him like cross country on this. According to the father's version of events, the relationship between the mother and father got, and son got increasingly worse. Elizabeth Katz put David's clothes and suitcases on at least two occasions and asked her, him to leave, including one on Mother's Day in 2007. In court filings, the father asserted that David routinely expressed his anger towards her. He claimed that when David was staying with him, the boy showed no signs of behavioral problems and was generally lively, communicative, and playful. In a 2010 letter, David Katz wrote a letter to a magistrate judge saying he wanted to live with his father and described his mother as pretty crazy. He said she called the police to the family's home about 20 times and gets drunk. He blamed her for his poor grades. Despite the problems, Kat graduated from Hammond High School in Columbia in 2011. He, atten- he went on attended at the University of Maryland, though he did not earn a degree. Kat used a gamer tags bread or sliced bread when competing the games maker EA Sports list as David Katz as a 2017 championship winner on the on one on the Madden competition circuit cats was known to barely speak to fellow gamers 
and sometimes exhibit an erotic playing style according to their competitors. We've always known he was a little off and stuff just because he wasn't at wasn't social at all. Shay Calvin, 21, of Seattle, said Monday in an interview. Well, well, well. Sounds like he had really had a more, very disturbing relationship with one of his parents. Calling the police on him multiple times instead of talking to the father. Not a good team player, according to this article. Not making any judgment, but I find it's very disturbing because when you have parents out calling the police on their kids, all hell breaks loose. It gets a lot worse and it backfires on everybody. Not being an expert, but based on amounts of information. I do find this is a big turnoff. Parents calling their calling their kids police on their kids. It should never ever be in this situation. And I noticed too that Maryland has one of the toughest gun laws in the United States. So how the hell he gets a couple of guns off in Baltimore shop? <laughs> Another spit in the bucket, I would say. Many people call the um, Baltimore CIA haven. And um, interesting here, because they can look up right here. Possession of firearms by people with mental illness. This is from the National Conference of State Legislators, which I'm gonna post on my foot. I'll put it, leave on my footnotes. And it's interesting. It says that under Title Code um, eight, Title 80 U.S. Code 922D, it is unlawful for any person to sell or otherwise dispose any firearm or ammunition to any person, nor to have any reasonable cause to believe that such person has been adjudicated as a mental defective or has been committed to any mental institution. And this is what the safety code, public safety code for Maryland says, 5-133. A person may not possess a regular farm if the person suffers from mental disorder and has a history of violent behavior against a person or another. Has been incompetent to stand trial because of mental retardation or mental disorder. He has been found not have has been not found criminally responsible by reason of body sanity has been voluntarily admitted for more than 30 consecutive days to a mental treatment facility. Has been committed to a mental, has been involuntarily committed to a mental health treatment facility. It's interesting there, so if I'm correct, the, so a certain laws did not, did not prevent him from ascertaining those particular tools. Wonder why, right? So sometimes the states know best. And that's one thing that's a big turnoff. You can put all these laws in the book, it's not 100% guaranteed. And, um, hmm, hmm. I'm just a little bit mellowed right now on this, so bear with me here. So, it looks like he had, uh, yeah, 12 days in late. 13 days. Yeah, so according to this, voluntary admitted more than 30 days to a mental health well, consecutive days. So there's probably a loophole in those gaps. But based on this, he has a uh, it has a history of him suffering a mental disorder. So it's always been not too keen. And like I said, Jack's, uh, Maryland has one of the most toughest gun laws in the in the United States. And if I'm correct, their firearm laws, I believe it's a waiting period. I'm going to look at this right now, how long is their waiting period on here. I just am um, winging this as I speak, but I'm going to add this to it, to it as well. Seven day waiting period, according to MarylandShooters.com. Try to get a little more specific here. It 
It says seven days. Where's the says business? Okay, so I'm just gonna. No, I'm gonna be right back on this. So uh, try to get this information. So I'll see you soon. Yeah. So um, I found a. I'll just do a little homework here, and, and it's interesting. I'm like looking right here. It's from the Maryland State Police Licensing Division as of June 7, 2013. Special one says here, transfer of a regulated firearm compliance advisory. The Maryland State Police License Division has been numerous inquiries regarding the seven-day waiting period and has been asked by many of our licensed firearm dealers to provide any clarity regarding the dealer's ability to release regulated firearms after the expiration of the seven-day waiting period. So, it was an effect issued on May 31st same, in that same year. And like it says here, can a Maryland firearm dealer release a regular firearm after seven-day release expires under an unannotated code of Maryland um, Public Safety Article Section 5-123A and consistent with the code Maryland Regulation Title 29 Section 03.01.10, a regular firearm may be lawfully sold, leased, or transferred by a licensed firearm dealer after a seven-day waiting period. Provides that a dealer person has not received notice that the application has been placed on hold or disapproved by Maryland State Police. And the dealer or the person have the actual knowledge or reasonable cause to believe that the recipient is disqualified from possessing a regular firearm under Maryland or federal law. A dealer or person may wait until notified that seven that Maryland State Police has completed its investigation, has no obligation or responsibility to sell, lease, or transfer. Prior to being notified that the investigation is completed, the dealer will forward reports of sales of all regular firearms into Maryland State Police within seven days of the completed sale. Interesting. So this is a seven day waiting period on that. So who dropped the ball? That's the question. <laughs> has nothing to do with the Second Amendment, right? Absolutely. So it's another possible falter. I say they happened with Nick with the substitute suspect Nicholas Cruz, which I talk about that on the Broward Ordinance because in Florida they have a uh, local option, 18-96. It's a five-day waiting period, working day period, to ascertain any firearm. And during that time, say automatic weapons, rifles is like three um, five day waiting period on the county level, and that didn't help out either. So, so sometimes, like I said, these laws don't do a damn thing. Let's just let you folks know. And that person has that mindset, it's gonna get it one way or the other. And he went through the books, and he got approved. What happened to the Maryland State State Police Licensing Division. Have you dropped the ball? Based on this, big possible, ch possibly yes. However, here's other thing here, which um, that was came out USA Today. It's it must be pe people over profit. Jacksonville shooting survivor to file lawsuit. Jackson, and since he several survivors of the deadly shooting rampage at the local gaming bar filed a negligent security lawsuit within days stemming from the carnage that resulted in three deaths. Laura said Tuesday, Matt Morgan said firm's client encode one person who was shot twice but survived Sunday's assault. Other, others suffered physical or emotional injuries when police said David Katz opened fire at Madden NFL 19 video game competition held at the GLHF game bar. It's interesting there about the game bar, JLF game bar. Unfortunately, the country has watched this unfold often in the past, Morgan said. Now it's not, now it's not the time for America to bare bone security, or even worse, no security at all. Morgan declined to identify his clients, but said his law firm continues to get calls from survivors. He also declined to name the likely targets of the lit litigation. The bar, which Occupy space in the back of Chicago Pizza Restaurant. So if I said P a Chicago Pizza Restaurant, but G J H J L H F Game Bar, okay. So, so sorry about that. Host the event. The bar and restaurant are part of the Jacksonville Landing Entertainment Complex, a waterfront area owned by the city. 
Okay, well, I'll tell you this. I can tell you right now. That aspect, if you're going to sue the city for not protecting the victims that are deceased or injured, sovereign immunity tort liability, 768.28. Expect that to throw it back at them. I'm just, you know, just looking at, look, just giving you those guys those facts. You know, I'm going to add it to the footnotes, too, after the, and when the show is done. The event itself was organized by video game giant EA. Safety of Americans must always come before profits. It must always be people over profits. Morgan said, cats killed two people and wounded ten others before shooting himself. Police said, Morgan said, the area has seen other shootings in recent years. It's foreseeable that shooting could occur at this location. He said eSports are big business. It's the type of event that has the high, highest level of security. Other Jacksonville landing businesses closed since the shooting. Reopened Tuesday. Some workers returned, peered into the windows of the Chicago Pizza where they could see tables and chairs return to the upright positions after many have been toppled by patrons scrambling to flee the bloodbath. The floor, had, which had been covered... With broken plates and glasses but spotless, Chicago Pizza employees hurried past onlookers, unlocked the front door, went inside, then closed and locked the door. More electronic arts canceled May 19 video game qualifiers. More Jacksonville shooting suspect has strange mental health issues. Tom Horton, owner of 904 Parallel, about 50 feet, of, 50 feet from Chicago Pizza, wasn't working when gunfire erupted Sunday, but he had to console a few of his employees who witnessed it. How does a young man treated for mental health get a gun? Horton said. He'll, we'll, get all t- we'll get all talking about there will be no action. It will all die down in three months. Somehow we have to get back to the value of life, which he's right. I'm not going to argue about that. Martin Bennett, who's, uh, who lives a couple of blocks away, said he was standing along the sidewalk on Sunday when chaos unfolded. I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't want to go in this direction, said Barnett 59, the Milwaukee native said he often eats a Chicago pizza called the uh, shooting senseless, I had nothing to do it had nothing to do with here nothing to do with gaming, Barnett said it was a sad day and a sad event he said that the, while the landing has struggled in recent years and some sh- um, shuttered shops and crime in and near the outdoor marketplace, he wants it to remain open, I hope it doesn't Pull, pull a file nail in a coffin. It's such a unique place in Jacksonville. And continue on here. Sunday's Madden um, competition was a qualify, qualifying event for the Madden Classic. A national competition, hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money. EA said it was canceling the three remaining qualifiers pending a review of safety procedures, including facilities included. Fatalities included Taylor Robertson, 27, of Bill of West Virginia, and Eli Clayton, 22, of Woodland Hills, California, who were competing in the Jacksonville event. Robertson, a husband and a father, won the Madden Classic in 2017. They're respected, positive and skilled competitors, the epitome of the players and personalities at the hearts of our community, EA CEO Andrew Wilson said. Their lo- the love of competition was evident through their participation in our events over the past few years. John Wester with the Tampa Field Division of Bureau, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Farms and Cats was armed with two guns, purchased illegal within the last month from a licensed dealer in Baltimore. Huh. So what happened there? Someone dropped the ball, right? One of the weapons had aftermarket laser sight attached to the trigger. Officials said live stream broadcasting the Jacksonville tournament show what appears to be a red laser dot on a victim's chest seconds before the, game, the shooting began. Divorce papers involving the uh, parents of cats indicated that he had been treated with psychiatric f- facilities as a teen. Federal law requires gun buyers to disclose any involuntary commitments to a mental institution. Maryland background checks deny gun sales to anyone involuntary committed to a psychiatric facility for any period of time or voluntary admitted or at least three consecutive days. Cats was n- known to known Two cats, two known hospitalizations as a adolescent, adolescent 
apparently did not reach that threshold. Daniel Webster, director of John Hopkins Center for Gun Policy and Research. So, and so there's a little claim on that, according to this. And it's interesting because the place they have it is at a bar, JL, um, JLF Game Bar. And if it, does, if it does pertain alcoholic beverages, it's considered illegal in the state of Florida. That, um, Corner Florida Statute 796, Section 12, on, under firearm free zones, of course. Sub, uh, section, subsection 12, Clause 12, any portion of establishment licensed to dispense alcohol beverages for consumption on the premises, which portion of the establishment is primarily devoted to such purpose. So, like it says on top of here, any license issued under this section does not authorize any person to open carry a handgun or conceal carry weapon or firearm into. That's and the Clause 12 does say that. So, Another firearm free zone blunder as well because the state knows best. And I'm not being gung ho or anything like that. But I like to see these facilities prepare themselves for anything like this necessary. That's what occurred in the Pulse nightclub in Belle Isle, which in the greater Orlando area. Same law happens again and happened. And of course, at the airport. Okay. With this um, floor statute 790.06 subsection 12, fire and free zones in schools and at the airports. So that's the question, my friends. These laws don't really work, and I believe in I believe in the owners. Property owners should have to make that decision. At least have people and their staff ready to go when it's necessary and take that responsibility have those higher standards when you have the state government involved it really can bite you in the rear end and it's funny because I was like checking on here about the sheriff Sheriff Mike Williams biography off the Jacksonville Sheriff's office and he has a nice little record, him serving in the Air National Guard, being a successful career at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office in 1991. Of course, he rode a beat down in downtown where he developed relationships with citizens and business leaders. So that's nice of that. And when I go a little further down here, Sheriff Williams earned his way up the ranks in the point position of the Director of Investigations and Homeland Security. Through his leadership and the partnership with federal law enforcement agencies, JSO deploys one of some of the most advanced technology available in the battle against domestic terrorism, drug trade, and organized crime. Ah, so it sounds like another federalized sheriff, just like Scott Israel, and um, in Broward County, plus Las Vegas Sheriff Joe Lombardo from the Vegas shootings. And I was like looking at some of the videos, which I want to leave up here for you folks to know. A case of a uh, a drill, a couple of drill that happened a block away. Jacksonville shooting drill confirmed. MK Ultra. This is by before it's before it's news. This is by Glenn Cannon, Can- Kennedy, and the way that he described the video of Dave Katz. With Anna Lanza, the eyes were very similar, cold, frozen, dot, and zombified, and like a pattern with this whole psychotropic drugs. And of course, we got one here. I'm gonna leave by Greg Erickson talks about shooting drills as well on 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 this, and it's the shooting drills. I mean, shooting drills and shootings in the same area. Sounds too much of a coincidence. These patterns are too damn obvious. I'm going to leave one more video here as well. On the... Well, I'd like to like to think the last stand on this. 
for the training session and during Madden tournament. And actually, they talked about this, uh, the new station. They talk about the drill. So, can we say potential New World Order agenda? I could say in good faith, yes. Use this, use this platform to take away your rights to defend yourselves and your family. Violate your natural born rights. It wasn't our freedoms that got into this mess. But all these bogus laws failed once again. And now they want to go a little further to tell all you folks you are not capable to take care of yourselves. We will do it for you. When state knows best, it turns to shite. Plain and simple. And this is why I get really damn disturbed when listening to all these sweet pie purebred sin, uh, folks with the sweet pie purebred syndrome, fat Orwellian vampires and saps, trying to tell me how to think. And I get these trolls on there too. I think they all become experts because they're on social media, and I'm not one of those individuals. I boldly admit it. Everyone needs to start paying attention. But I'm definitely going to ask that sovereign immunity tort liability. Because if they're going to be... If they're going to be going after the city or the police for not protecting their kids, it can burn them. So um, that's one of those areas you have to look at. Hmm. I'll definitely do it right now. Because he may, he may probably, they probably may take to court with the facility or EA in the facility. So there's a lot of areas gonna be gonna be pretty interesting, complex lawsuit, and hope justice will prevail for the heirs on this. You may get something. In some in there are certain areas you may get nothing from the city because the sovereign immunity tort liability, including the police themselves. So I'm gonna add that to the footnotes from this website, National Conference of State Legislators. Really good uh, material and it tells you all the fifty states because I did put this on there multiple times. I think it's time to put it up again so you can the folks can read it from your state level. And um, call to educate educate people, and that's uh, really it. And I'll probably do another show later on. I'll see what happens. See what mood I'm in. Got a few things I got on my mind. But I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share through social media social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you're saying something that's interesting, it'll be great. Whatever you do, please address the correspondence with the quorum. I will post all my social media sites, including my email addresses, to. Uh, my speaker page, you can get me on YouTube and all that as well. In addition, you can email me at lookyluck number three at gmail.com or through encrypted ones with the Proton Mail account, lookyluck numbers zero three at protonmail.com. All right, my friends, once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves, keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.